Back into it, uh, day two, Hail Varsity Radio, Indianapolis. As uh, Matt Rule with us, head coach for Nebraska football, Chris Schmidt and Elijah Herbal. Coach, thanks for spending some time with us and jumping in on Radio Row. How's Indy treated you so far? So far, so good, man. You know, a little St. Elmo's. Uh, you know, it's a good spot. It's a, it's a great spot. I, I, I challenged the guys to see who could eat the who could eat the cocktail sauce the fastest, and uh, they weren't very impressive. We had a newbie last ni- night that had never tried the sauce, and uh, I just missed his final goal line stand reaction of the sauce <laughs> getting him, <laughs> and he just lost it and about fell out of his chair. But it, it hurts so good. I guess is the best way to put That's it. Exactly right. Coach, uh, let's talk um, football for two seconds here. And uh, an all-time question. Elijah and I were talking about this. You're starting an all-time team. Are you going to go LT or Reggie White on defense? LT. Next question. Well, I, Dumb I, question. I, I had a pet name. I named my pet LT at one point. So, like, what was your pet? Well, it was a little baby iguana I had in college. Like, I'm a Lawrence Taylor fan. I, I, and I, I love Reggie White. Like, the, that, like, there's not two you could have made. Me, there's not another person you could have made me think twice for a second. But yeah, it's LT. 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 Well, when did you get? Let's flip it around here and go with the offensive line side of things. And if you're if you're just picking an all time offensive lineman to build your offensive line around that foundational piece, who are you picking? Trent Williams. Okay. Yeah, Trent Williams. I mean, I, I watched him live at direct. He's the best. He's the best. What possessed you to get an iguana? Uh, you know, I was trying to be cool in college, you know, like, <laughs> you know, before before our social media and, and cell mm-hmm. phones, you know, like, hey, I, I do have a pet iguana. That's that's all right. Uh, you know, not for me. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Matt rules with us here, Radio Row, Hail Varsity Radio. So let's let's talk about uh, the cool factor uh, buzz around Nebraska uh, year two, and uh, I'm interested here with just uh, the expectations and. When we talk about Nebraska, uh, your thoughts as you move forward here with this second year and some of the noise outside. Well, I don't hear too much of the noise. I mean, um, um, I, I, I'll i say this. I expect us to be good. You know, I expect us to be good. I expect us to be better than we were last year. You know, I thought last year we had a great uh, defense at times. I thought we had really good special teams. Now, not always – not always kick, kicking. Not, not when I say special teams, I mean coverage, blocking mm-hmm. punts, faking a punt. You know, scoring a touchdown. Um, I expect our young kicker to, to take another step. Tristan's going to take another step this year. I mean, coming in as a freshman, that's a hard thing to do, and I think he did a great job. But he'll take a step. Um, and then you know we have to be better on offense. And I thought we made a ton of progress, ton of progress this spring. And based on everything I see this summer, and I'm not involved too much, but they're they're working their tails off. So. Um, I, I I don't want to I don't want to get to those those close games in the fourth quarter and uh, be like oh man it's a close game I want I can't I want the first game to be close in the fourth quarter I want us to master this I want us to attack being great in the fourth quarter so I expect us to be good coach you hear a lot of, of other coaches say that you don't truly know what you have with your team until the first game until you're playing guys wearing a different colored jersey and obviously you can get a good idea of what your team is but until you get that first real test you're not truly going to know but I do want to get your thoughts on what you're excited to learn about this team as you progress through the, the rigors of fall camp? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I think the one benefit we have is we do know that we have a really good defense. So we know that, like, when you're blocking Jamari or you're blocking Ty or Nash, that's one of the better D-lines in the country. And so we know that when you're running a go ball against Tommy Hill that you're playing against one of the best players in the country. So I think at year one to year two does provide us some context. Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited for guys. You know, everyone's going to ask me about competitions, like who's going to start here. I'm excited to see guys show the development that they've made, show the progress they've made. Because um, I'm just telling you, man, we, we, we dream of playing 16 games. We dream of playing on January 20th. And so to do that, it's going to – guys that – there might be guys that don't even get invited to camp that are playing by the end of the year. There are guys that last year that thought, you know, just J- Julian, oh, excuse me, Jalen Lloyd thought he was going to – red shirt probably last year and next thing you know he's catching a touchdown against iowa you know to tie the game so or, or make it a close game so I, I i i want to see just everyone show what they have but uh, i do think our offense working against our defense does give us a semblance of hey we know how good we are on d matt rules with us here hail varsity radio in indy chris schmidt and elijah herbal coach let's talk about metal toughness and as you've had a chance to observe and talk to the team leaders and uh, instill a culture, how do you feel about the guys between the years? I know it's a big question, but there are leaders on this football team 
Where's the team's mental state? Well, I think it's twofold. I think, you know, that one part is resilience, you know, just constantly coming back to the table. I think, you know, whereas last year people were like, man, how did you handle losing those last four, you know, all by three points or less? I was always kind of like, well, if there's one thing I learned, it's no matter how heartbreaking the, the game was, our guys came back the next day and came back the next week and battled to the very end. And so I know we're resilient. You know, how we're going to handle success at some point, that that's, remains to be seen. But handling adversity and handling the tough things, I know we can do. I think the next step for our guys is getting into those tight games and not having that, you know, oh, here we go again mentality when something goes wrong. I mean, when something goes wrong, it's supposed to, it's supposed to spur you on. It's supposed to make you angry and play a little bit harder and just lock you in. It's not supposed to have your energy dissipate. And so that's part that we have to work on, overcoming that fear of failure, our players love our fans, and they don't want to let them down. And sometimes in not wanting to let them down, you don't play as well as you possibly could. So that's my job. That's what, that's, we've got the first block tackled in terms of you know, handling adversity. Now it's expecting to win and, and handling the adversity and still finding a way to win. That's our next job. Coach, one of the things with handling adversity that I think you've hit on before is that brotherhood aspect within a team of playing for that guy next to you. And one of the things you did last year was stick the guys in the dorms for fall camp. Are you planning on bringing that back? Are you going to be in the dorms yet again? Yeah, we'll move into Selleck uh, next Tuesday. So I'll move in. Staff will move in. You know, some of our auxiliary staff, you know, they're a little bougie. They won't do it probably, but but the coaches will, and I'll be there. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, life's all about connection. And we try. We, we, we find ourselves now more than ever not connected to the people that are closest to us because we're connecting to someone on a phone somewhere else. So I can't say this will solve all the problems, but at least that's a, tra- a tradition. At least it's something in the spring I heard guys complaining about. So... That makes me feel good that we're doing something that they'll probably remember when they're when they're 60 or 70. Are you planning on getting any of the guys in the new NCAA football game once you move into the dorms? Uh, you know, I, I, that's all I hear about. My son, I, I haven't seen my son for like three days Same. downstairs playing. So um, I, I have a feeling I'll have to like outlaw the game at some point. Like, hey, study your own plays. You know, I know you guys know all know how to run. You know, <laughs> whatever the plays called on 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 uh, NCA, but I need you to know our plays. Matt Rules with us. A couple more minutes. Hail Varsity Radio. So one thing that you've touched on, and I want to get your feel, is getting home to the opposing quarterback with four-man heat versus blitzing. Uh, is that an area you think or anticipate the defense stepping up in this year? I do. I think they did a great job all spring of improving that. Really, you know, taking things to the next level in terms of the way you rush. I mean, there's there's both rushing, you know, hey, I need to beat this guy. But, you know, sometimes they slide to you. There's two to you. And mm-hmm. Terrence taking some more advanced techniques and sort of reading some things that I th- I'm excited about. So, um, you know, we're going to blitz. We're going to be aggressive. That's who we are. But when the time comes, I also want to get home with four. Or, and that doesn't always mean sacks. Sometimes it just means we force you to throw it a little bit earlier. You know, we tip a ball and the ball gets picked off. We've talked a lot about turning the ball over. I mean, we got to take the ball away. <laughs> and uh, those are the things I'm anxious for. Coach, uh, a thought on your quarterbacks, as a lot is expected. They'll be the uh, the driver in helping make that offense make a jump. you got an experienced lineback, but what are you hearing about your quarterbacks here as you head into camp? You know, I'm, I'm excited for them to have a chance to showcase everything that they've done. You know, they've, they've worked hard in the spring, and I think they all got better in the spring, and they've worked hard this summer, so I'm excited to see them get into camp and I want to see them compete, not not because I want to see who gets the job. I want to see them compete so I can see the greatness that each one brings. And so they all bring something different to the table. You can play a little differently. I think for us as coaches, one of our jobs, our job is not just sit there and be like, who's the starter? It's to say, hey, okay, when when Danny's in, you know, hey, these are the plays he excels at. When, when Heinrich's in, these are the things we can do. When Dylan's in, these are the things that we can do. Because I think we all know in, in college football, man, at some point, whoever you deem number one is going to come out and number two is going to go in and, and uh, I, think the, I think the recruiting class we had last year at quarterback has set us up to have a quarterback room that's as deep as any in the country, uh, you know, mixing those guys in with Heinrich. And Coach, when you talk about some of these young quarterbacks you've brought in, a young quarterback's best friend, really any quarterback's best friend, is a, a solid rushing attack. It makes things so much easier for them. What do you want to see from your offensive line, from your running backs this year? I know they, they work in tandem. It's a, a one-two punch. The offensive line has to trust the running back, and the running back has to trust the offensive line. What do you want to see from your rushing attack this year? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to be able to run the ball. Um, you know, I think I don't know what we finished last year, second, third, fourth, something like that in the league. Now, part of that was, you know, we also ran the quarterback a bunch, and, and so we'd only do that really with Heinrich. 
But the, the opposite of that is because the passing game, and really our passing efficiency was so low last year, I mean, we were running the ball into uphill boxes. We were running the ball into, into blitzes. And what we have now is we have, you know, skill on the outside, uh, you know, three quarterbacks who can, if you pressure us, they can, they can go out there and throw the ball to Isaiah Nair on a one-on-one. They can get the ball to Jalen, you know, on a one-on-one and just takes one missed tackle. And, and, and when you look at the teams that score a bunch of points, it's that run-pass mix, that balance, that, you know, hey, if you want to blitz us, now we might be throwing the ball and you might be in trouble. So that's the growth. I think we, we'll be able to run the football, and I think we're running in, we'll run it into better boxes this year if our passing game is what I hope it is. Matt Rule with us here on Hale Varsity. Uh, Coach, good to see you. Best part of your golf game as we say goodbye. What's the best part of my yeah, golf game? Right now. The 19th hole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well done. Take care, Coach.